Hey guys, John here. Welcome back to the series, How to Use Diva. This is video four, and today we're talking about the Triple VCO, the most CPU-hungry oscillator panel of the entire synth, and also model after the Mini Moog Model D. Very, very cool stuff. So since this one is CPU intensive, we might want to turn on this multi-core and also take a look down in the main tab on this accuracy setting. You might want to change it from great to fast or draft if it's kind of bogging your computer down somewhat. So I thought I'd point that out before we get started here. So with triple VCO, that means we have three oscillators to choose from. So let's right click up here in this display and go to an init preset and get a fresh start here and take a look at what we're seeing here. So let's turn this cutoff all the way to the top because it defaults a little bit down. So let's get a true representation of the waveform and turn our output down just a little bit. So what we're hearing is gonna be three of these oscillators at once. And we can see this volume under this mixer right over here because this one spans two panels. It spans this oscillator panel and the mixer panel. So this knob over here is the knob for the volume for oscillator number one, the second one, oscillator number two, and the third, oscillator number three. So let's turn down three and two to listen to just number one. Perfect, okay. So if you wanna change the tuning, the octave of any of the oscillators, we're gonna go over to the range and drop this to the left or to the right, depending on if we wanna drop it or raise it an octave or two. All right, now, if we want to change the detune, the fine tuning, we notice that only oscillator two and three have that. So let's take a look at both of these. So let's turn oscillator number two on. So now we're gonna be listening to oscillator number one and oscillator number two. And let's change this detune just a little bit here. Perfect. Now, what's something that's really interesting is if we turn this detune more and more and more, once we get past this little line here, take a look at what happens over here. Boom, it kind of clicks over right here and intuitively knows to, to put the knob at the right spot where it's supposed to go and we can keep turning and keep turning and keep turning the slow moving knob and then eventually, boom, we get over here to the last one. Let's double click back to default and I thought I'd point that out, it's kind of interesting. So let's turn number two back down and listen to number one again, our saw wave. Now if you go all the way to the left, we have the inverted saw which to my eyes and ears seems like it's a slightly different waveform. Yes, the polarity is opposite and inverted, but it doesn't look like that's just the thing happening. It looks like a slightly different waveform altogether. Interesting. So we have this inverted saw, and then over here we have a triangle. Then we have our regular saw again, our square wave, and pulse wave. And we can change that width which is interesting because all of these waveforms, we can morph in between each other. They're not basically snapping to those different shapes. And maybe you have intuitively asked yourself, can we modulate this? And yes, yes we can, which brings us to this shape mod, this shape modulation here. So we see this knob here, and then we see to the left of that, we have three little switches. Now each one of these switches corresponds to their oscillators. So this top switch over here corresponds to Os oscillator number one. So it's basically saying we're gonna enable shape modulation to apply to oscillator number one based upon how much depth we have. So let's take a listen to that. And then turn this one off. Let's see, we'll do the same thing with oscillator number two. So we have to turn down one and then listen to two in the mixer. Same thing happening if we turn this off it stops. So basically remember these three, these three switches correspond to the three oscillators. Now double clicking this here, we have the same concept, but just with pitch modulation or tune modulation as it's written here. So let's turn down number two and let's go back to oscillator number one. Great, now this one says envelope two. So for consistency, let's go over here back to LFO two. We're gonna go over this list at a later video, but there's a lot of options to choose from. So LFO two is going to be modulating the pitch for whatever oscillator we choose. So right now we're listening to one, so we have to select this top switch to say we're enabling the pitch modulation for oscillator number one, and then increase this modulation depth right here. So if we do a little amount right here, it's very obvious that we're changing the pitch. The more we increase this depth, the more that pitch is gonna change. So pretty self-explanatory, hopefully. Now up here at the top, we see FM one, 
two, two, and three. So basically frequency or oscillator number one is going to be frequency modulating two and three. So let's take a listen to that. So let's turn oscillator number one all the way down out of the mix and bring number two in here. And let's take a listen to number two. Great, we have our sound wave. Now let's give it some frequency modulation from oscillator number one by turning this knob here. And we can also change the timbre by changing the pitch of oscillator number one. And we can change the waveform too to get some crazy sounds. We could even modulate this right here like we did with the shape mod, turn on oscillator number one on and then change the shape mod. So right here we're combining frequency modulation with shape modulation, kind of interesting. Now you might have noticed we can change this shape modulation, the tune modulation with these three switches and this knob here, but we don't have switches here. So how are we going to modulate this here? So for that, we have to go to the modifications panel. Now here under VCO, we can see FM and cross mod depth. This is where we want to go to. Now here it says envelope two. Now we can reassign this for consistency for right now to LFO number two. Now, as soon as we change this modulation right here, we notice this little M pops up. And that's basically saying that anywhere you see an M, that means that modulation is occurring in this modifications panel, as it says here, M, parameters modulated here. So for example, we see resonance mod right here. So if we select LFO2 again, and we turn this, take a look over here at this emphasis, which is basically their name for resonance. Boom, we turn this and we see the M. So at a glance, if we ever see this M, we can say, oh, okay, so this has been modulated and it's been modulated in the modifications panel. So we can come over here and then find, okay, it's, oh, LFO2 is to work in that. This is my value right over here. And you kind of have an easy way to navigate and see what's actually happening with the modulation. So yeah, let's take a listen to that. So here is frequency modulation being modulated. It's a lot of M's in there. Frequency modulation modulated in the modifications panel. After a while, no one will know what you're talking about. Okay, moving on from there, what we also do need to talk about is over here in the mixer panel. So this is going to be more so looking at the spectrum view here. So let's go to an init preset, bring back our cutoff, and let's drop this range down by one octave. So we have oscillator number one going into the mix. We're removing two and three. So we're just listening to a low end oscillator number one saw wave. Now this feedback, once we increase this, we're basically taking the signal post filter back into the synthesizer, feeding it back in. So hence feedback. Now the interesting part, it can give you some low end boost, but it can also give you some wild subharmonics. And especially if you have a lot of resonance going on and some, maybe some cutoff modulation, some, some effects, you can get some really wild sounds with this thing. So even on a lower note right here, take a listen how much the bass increases just a little bit once we turn this knob here. And then once we go further, it's going to get kind of crazy. So imagine the possibilities right there. So from the feedback, let's go over here to the noise. So we turn this on here or turn the oscillator number one off and increase the noise. And by default, it's going to be on white noise. And we can also change it to pink noise which is going to sound a little bit softer to our human ears. All right, and last but not least, we need to talk about sync because it can be kind of confusing. And I think this demonstration with two oscilloscopes is going to be helpful for us to kind of visualize what's happening and also hear what's happening. So, for example, as we see here, we have, let's go back to our uh, oscillator number one. We have an oscilloscope and this is basically taking the signal from the same channel here. So we have a white one and a red one down here. So basically with sync, right, with these two knobs here, if we enable this one here on, that means that oscillator number two will be hard synced to oscillator number one. If we turn both of them on, that means oscillator two and number three will be hard synced to oscillator number one. So it would have been kind of maybe helpful if there was maybe a two and a three 
I don't know, maybe it didn't save space, but basically this top one is going to be two is going to be enabled to sync to number one, and then three is going to be also synced to number one. So what's happening here? So let's drop this first one down by an octave and let's take a look at this here. So we have this shape here. And let's freeze that. Let's actually get a little bit... Uh, there we go. That's a good picture here. So what's gonna, what's happening here? We see this is cycling every single time, right? Just a sound wave endlessly, endlessly cycling, right? So basically what happens is if oscillator number two is going to be cycling faster, every time this first oscillator finishes its cycle, it doesn't matter wherever oscillator number two is in its cycle, it stops and then it restarts from the very beginning, giving some different interesting shapes and sounds. So with that being said, let's take a visual look at actually what's happening here. So let's bring up our view settings here. Let's take oscillator one out of the mix because we already have its picture taken. It's smiling happily right there. And let's turn up number two. Now, keep in mind, like I said, this is going to be one octave higher. So let's freeze that. Now we can kind of basically verify this, although this is an analog synth and it's not exactly going to be lined up perfectly because it's also, there's small differences once once effects are stacked on each other. But for all intents and purposes, we can see that this is a doubling of frequency because every other cycle is going to be lined up to the saw wave. Okay, makes sense, right? So what happens now once we deviate from the tuning by using the detune, take a look at what happens. Let's enable the sync first and take a look. And let's take a picture. Hold on, let's make, take a better picture here. Okay. So we can see these little peaks here, these little like sharp points right here. And if we lay this over this synth here, this or this wave here, this is a very good demonstration. So basically, let's take a look here. So this oscillator number two is going to be this red one, right? So it's drawing its shape. And keep in mind this white saw wave in the background, right? It's drawing its shape at double the rate. And it keeps going, it keeps going, and it's going back up. And then it's going to keep continuing on this down ramp here, but that's where it runs into oscillator number one, and that's where it restarts its cycle. So now it says, oh, okay, I'm going to stop right here. Whatever this peak is here, it stops right here, and then it starts again redrawing its shape. So not overlaid here. We can see it's going down. This is going to be the starting spot. It goes down, it goes back up, it goes down, and it goes back up. And once it comes back down here, it should continue, right, normally, right, if it's double the rate. But this is where it runs into the restart or the end of oscillator number one. And that's where it says, okay, we're done. Start again. Boom. And that's how that process works visually. So with that process, you can get a lot of interesting sounds. So now we looked at it, now let's take a listen kind of to see what that sounds like. And, and remember somewhere once you get like to the perfect fifth or seven semitones up, you kind of start really noticing a difference there, right? So now it kind of sounds clean there. But once we start deviating from that again, we see those restarting spots. And now we're going to be two octaves up. So if we took a picture of that again, we can kind of lay that over again. So now it's doing a cycle, another cycle, another cycle, another cycle. And, and finally, once this, this saw wave, this first one, this white one in the background restarts, that's where we see that peak again. And that's where it starts redrawing its shape, giving us those little notches there. Now, that's just a demonstration with saw waves, saw waves because that seems like the easiest way to visualize it and also hear it at the same time. So that's pretty much what hard sync is in a nutshell. And keep in mind, you can do two and you can do number three and get some wild different tones out of that. So that was the triple VCO, the heavy CPU one. It's a cool one and also spans two different panels here. So hopefully you learned something. Thank you so much for watching and we'll see you in the next video.